Welcome to this Alan Talks Tech video. If you'd like additional information on my technology videos, please visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. So before we dive into the new 5G core, let's take a quick look at the core that we're all working with today, uh, the LTE Evolved Packet System, or EPS. Uh, very quickly, the cell phone is going to typically connect up to the uh, eNodeB, the RF side of the network. The eNodeB will be connected to the MME, the Mobility Management Entity, which will in turn verify that we're legitimate users on the network by going to the HSS and the AAA server uh, to make sure that not only are we legitimate users, what types of services we can access, and of course whether we've paid our bills. If we check out, the MME will then assign a serving gateway that we can connect up to. Once connected to the serving gateway, we will then be passed over to the uh, public data network uh, gateway, which will in turn go through a TDF, which is the traffic detection function. The TDF provides a deep packet inspection to find out exactly what type of traffic is passing. And if required, it can be uh, used to mark the packets accordingly uh, for different types of uh, prioritization. Obviously, the TDF is going to work very closely with the PCRF, which is the policy and charging rules function. Now, the Evolve Packet Core is going to undergo a number of changes as it slowly moves towards a new 5G architecture. The 5G architecture is most probably going to be a little bit of an evolution uh, rather than an overnight revolution and there'll be a number of baby steps that we're going to have to take uh, to get towards a new core. Uh, for a number of years it's quite possible that we'll be working with a non-standalone architecture, basically uh, a hybrid system of the LTE uh, Evolved Packet Core and the new radio, the GNODE-Bs, that are being introduced. One step is to separate out the control plane and the user plane. Today, if we look at the network, the Evolved Packet Core, the control plane and user plane runs through the serving gateway, the public uh, data network gateway, uh, and the MME. Everything runs through, um, whether it's control plane or data plane. But in the future, we're going to separate out this functionality. So, for example, the public data network gateway and the serving gateway will be split into control plane and user plane functionality. The reason for this is to provide us with the ability to scale the network independently. For example, with IoT applications in the future, we may find IoT devices to be very chatty, but really not providing a lot of data. So the control plane function of the network may have to be scaled up a little bit quicker than the data plane component. By separating out this functionality, it gives us the flexibility required to move forwards. Now let's take a look at the next generation service-based architecture. In the lower left-hand corner of the picture, we have the UE or user element. Obviously, typically the mobile device, the mobile phone. This is going to connect up to the radio access network. And if it's a, a complete standalone uh, 5G network, uh, this could very well be the G node B or the next generation node B. Moving across from the radio access network, we connect up to the UPF. The user plane function, or the user UPF, is a hybrid of two devices which we would have previously found in the Evolve Packet Core. Here we're going to find, for example, the packet gateway and the serving gateway, but only from the user plane perspective. So within the new core, just as in the uh, previous network, we're going to separate out the user plane and control plane. Moving on from the UPF, we'll then connect up to the data network, which could either be the Wild and Woolly Internet or, for example, uh, an IMS core. Moving up into the middle portion of the network, we're going to connect up to the AMF. The AMF is the Access and Mobility Management Function. And this is a very powerful device which provides a number of different functions. The AMF is basically the MME functionality which we found in the Evolve Packet Core. Uh, 
It provides termination of the radio access network signaling, but on the digital side, not on the RF side. It provides registration management, connection management, reachability management, mobility management, and it also provides the lawful intercept point for the control plane signaling. It also works very closely with the AUSF for access authentication and access authorization. The AUSF is basically the HSS and the AAA server rolled into one. The AUSF can be used to help verify uh, users' identities and whether they're legitimate users of the network and what types of applications they have access to, as well as if they've paid their bills. Moving over to the right, we have the SMF. The session management function, again, is a hybrid of the packet data gateway, the serving gateway, and the MME, but this time from the perspective of the control plane, not the user plane. So the SMF is going to be used to help direct the traffic. It provides an anchor point for uh, setting up and tearing down um, sessions across the network, whether they're, uh, for example, um, data, data traffic uh, or voice traffic applications. Moving up to the top left, we've got the network slice selection function. The NSSF uh, helps provide the functionality of network slicing. Network slicing gives us the ability to not only have one virtual network, but many. We can have, for example, using the same um, physical infrastructure, we can virtualize different networks. We can have a virtual network for the mobility function for the cellular users. We can have a slice for autonomous vehicles. We can have a slice for emergency services. We could have a slice for streaming video for fixed 5G applications. The network expose, exposure function is basically acting as a proxy, providing a well-defined API to other operators potentially so that they can interface with this network. The NEF also provides the ability uh, for other users or other operators to um, pull out information with regards to the types of services that are available and also statistics and analytics within the network. The NRF is the network repository function and here we store basically all the network functions which are available within the network, including third-party applications. These are exposed via the network exposure function uh, to other operators and other users uh, within the networking environment. Moving across, we have the policy control function. The policy control function is very much like the PCRF, the policy control reporting function found in the Evolve Packet Core. This is used to help prioritize the different types of traffic within the network, whether it's video, voice or data, for example. The UDM is the Unified Data Management, and it provides a very important function as far as security is concerned. For example, all the key management is performed within the UDM. So this is a very important function, function to provide this security uh, within the network. Moving over to the right, we have the application function. The application function works very closely with the PCF, the policy control function, to enforce policies and ensure that different types of traffic have the type of priority required when they pass through the network. For example, if it's a Volte call going through the IMS core, the AF will help prioritize the traffic, ensuring that it has a correct level of prioritization through the network. If we look at the central group, they can all be regarded as the control plane functions uh, within the uh, next generation service-based architecture. Uh, the lower part of the network, the UPF, can really be regarded as the user plane functionality within the network. So these are the two groups, or if you like, CUPS, the control plane and the user plane separation. Thank you for watching this Alan Talks Tech video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get more information on my technology videos with additional material, you can visit my wiki at alantesswiki.com.
www.pbworks.com. Once again, thanks for viewing.